What I want to talk about is gold-plated jewelry. You don't need solid gold for jewelry. You know, it worries me that gold is such a uh, great conductor of electricity. Do we have a higher chance of getting struck by lightning if we're wearing solid gold? Although it's not solid because it's too soft. It has to be mixed with other materials. Anyway, back to gold-plated jewelry. There's this place online where I get bracelets made, and I have them put on it whatever I want. It could be a picture, it could be a saying, it could be a foreign language, anything you want. So it starts out gold-plated. I'm going to show you a new one. Of course, the new one is very shiny. I save it for special occasions. Um, you see? Now, it's gold-plated. And I asked the lady who makes these, a very nice lady online, and she said there's brass underneath. So brass is actually copper and zinc. After a while, it starts to look like this. You see it's a little dull now? I found out that if I hang something on the other end, then this part doesn't, doesn't start traveling all day. It, it most of the time stays there. It counterbalances. Anyway, back to the lack of shine on it after a while. Here's the new one again. So what I want to say is when you use gold plated jewelry with brass underneath sometimes you get a mark here. It looks like gray or green. It washes off. What's the big deal? And besides that, isn't it logical and scientific because our bodies actually need copper and zinc and contain copper and zinc? So what's the problem? What if everyone was logical and scientific instead of just talking about science? I don't know. When I look at this, it just reminds me of nature and science. And I remember that there's copper and zinc underneath there. I guess most of the gold is gone anyway. And for religious people, there was brass in the temple, in Solomon's temple. That's a nice thought also. Think about it.